Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly and I am a physical therapist that specializes in oncology and lymphedema. So today we're gonna to go through how to apply Coban or Coban 2 or to a lower leg. You can also apply the same thing or the Coban 2 light to an arm if that's something that you need. What I want to talk about though, first off, is what is the difference between the short stretch bandages that you're used to using and Coban. For short stretch, it's a lot cheaper over time. You can reuse the bandages over and over, especially if you wash them well. The downside of the bandages is that they typically fall down pretty easily. They're more likely to cause a tourniquet effect, which can be more painful or give you skin breakdown and they are bulkier and warmer overall. For the Coban 2, the nice thing about the Coban is that it is thinner and so you create a little bit more of a cast feel that you don't feel as bulky and that you can move around with a little bit easier as well. The downside of Coban is that it's more expensive because it's a one-time use. The way to get it off is typically just to go ahead and cut it off. So when would I use Coban? I would use Coban for someone who needs just a quick tune-up but has a very active job or an active lifestyle and the bandages are just too much to move around in. So the, we'll use the Coban so that they can be active during their day while they help shrink their leg. So there are two options. There's a Coban 2 and a Coban 2 Light. We typically use the light for an upper extremity or an arm and then this Coban for the lower leg. They do come in different sizes now, so they do have a small one for the foot and the toes that we use more of like a toe box, like a sock, not each toe individually. And they also have a larger one than this that we typically use for the knee all the way to the thigh or the groin. This box we usually use a lot for just the foot and the lower leg, so that's what I'm going to show you with today. So the only things you need are a box of the Coban and scissors. Some people may, may have tape ready and that works as well. So again, make sure that you put your lotion on first that your skin is uh, moist, but make sure you'll always let it dry too so there's not too much moisture under the bandages. Always make sure you do your skin checks prior, making sure you don't have any cuts or openings. If you are more prone to irritation, especially at your, the front of your ankle, behind the knee, inside of the elbow, you can use your Artiflex or that soft foam or something to pat it a little bit so you don't get as much pressure there. So in your box of Coban, you're gonna see three things, typically. You're gonna have the layer one, which will have the big one on it. Your layer two, number two on it and then most of them should have a liner stocking that's because that the layer two is very sticky so you stick to everything including your bed sheets if you have a pet this thing attracts pet hair like crazy so the liner is nice to put over the top so you don't feel that so layer one we're gonna open it up So this is considered more of a comfort layer. This is very similar to what you would use your padding or your foam for with your short stretch bandages. It, it's very thin, as you can see, but it does on the one side have a little bit more of a gauze stick to it so that the other layer will adhere to this. So when I use the foam, I would use it like I would do a copper foam or a Rosetel Soft or anything else. I'm just gonna spiral it up I'm gonna allow it to overlap about 50% all the way up. This has a, just a little bit of give, but not much to it. So you're not gonna be able to stretch this a lot, but you do just wanna pull a little bit or enough so it lays as flat as possible throughout your bandages. The difference between this and short stretch typically is that I usually don't close off the heel. Where a short stretch, I would cover the heel. This one, I typically skip the heel as the heel typically doesn't swell specifically. 
you'll swell up higher a little bit around the ankle bones. You can make sure you get that, but you'll see what I do. So if you were to band your toes, you would go ahead and do that first. Then from there, think of it like a snail, so the gauze part's up on top. And you don't wanna get your toes, and you especially don't wanna get the little toe. And you're just gonna go ahead and start wrapping it around. And you can do an anchor there, but you don't need to. So then when I get to the ankle, I'm gonna come straight across around there. So again, my heel is open just a little bit, and that's okay for the Coban, unless you have more severe issues. So from there, I'm just gonna start overlapping it halfway all the way up. Pulling just enough so that it lays flat, but you don't need to make it really tight. Okay, so when you get to the top, you wanna do about two finger widths below the knee crease so that you don't get too much of a cut into the back of the knee. And that top layer, you can come around twice so it has a little bit more of an anchor at the top. Now I have a little bit extra, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. That away, and then just to hold it in, you can either tape it down, but I'm just gonna tuck it in the corner and we'll come back and fix that. So that's layer one, just the soft foam. Layer two, open it up. Now layer two is the compressive bandage. This is gonna be the big piece of the puzzle to help reduce your swelling. So think of it like your short stretch bandage when you do it. So it is a very, very thin gauze that is stretchy, okay? And so you're gonna do the same thing like you would with this layer, thinking this, that you wanna give it a pull. You can pull it pretty snug, but don't pull it so hard that you cause a crease in the middle. So try to keep it dispersed. But you can pull to 70 to 90% if you want, okay? So I think of it like kind of like a snail, makes it a lot easier when you're unraveling it. And you're going to just cover the exact area that your layer one was. And as I go around, I'm giving it a nice pull to give that compression. Now I'm gonna get to the ankle. You wanna try to keep your, your foot at a 90 degree angle. You don't wanna be pushed down because then when you start to walk and bend it up, it's gonna fold over. So give a pull and then at the ankle, I'm gonna come around, try to keep it as flat as you can. And around there. Be gentle at the front of the ankle, especially if you get tourniquets a lot there. You don't want it to roll up. And then from there, same thing, overlap about 50% of the last bandage and give a nice pull as you go along. I'm gonna keep going all the way up. So as I come around, I have a little give and I pull and keep that tension all the way around as I go. And once I get to the top, I'm gonna unhook that piece I did so it's smooth. All the way around, just below that. Again, you can anchor it a little bit if you want. And now you could just cut off there. If someone has just a lot of swelling and we wanna speed it up, you're welcome to come back and down with whatever extra you have, or you can save it for another time. I don't usually pull as hard, but just to give a little bit extra compression, it's definitely an option, although not necessary. Okay, and then at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And then lay that flat. Or again, you can cut it off here and just do one layer. And then I'll go through and just form it or push it all down so nothing's sticking up. And that's it. So again, it's, it's like a cast, so it's not gonna roll down like your short stretch will. But as you start to shrink or as your volume of your leg or your arm goes down, this is gonna get a lot more loose and that's okay. It still shouldn't fall down. On top of that, you can use your liner. It's just like a stocking you put over the top. 
so that you don't stick to everything. And there you go. So you can leave the Coban on for three to five days. If you're new to it or new to bandaging, you probably wanna go on the shorter end of that. Um, if you're used to it, you know your skin really well and you trust it, you can go a little bit longer. Um, but whenever you're ready or if you have any pain, you do wanna take it off. So unlike the bandages with the short stretch, you can't just undo it unless you have, unless you just did it recently, you can unravel it. But for most people, after you've been wearing it a while, it's too hard to do that, so you actually have to cut it off. After you've shrunk down a while, you're gonna have a lot more space in this area to cut it off a lot easier. But you wanna use a blunt tip scissors. Now I don't have them, but you wanna use a blunt tip so you don't get yourself cut or stuck. But what you'll do, I usually cut on the side of the leg, not down the middle, so that when you come down with your scissors, you don't get yourself. But you do wanna come up and go ahead and just cut that off. So what I usually stick my fingers underneath and then put the scissors on the other side so I don't cut my leg, but I'd rather feel it on my hand. And if you did a lot of layering, it's gonna be a little bit thicker. So you might have to do it in sections. You cut all the way down. And there it is, so it's all cut off. You just throw it away when you're done with that. So again, the Coban is a really nice option or another tool in your toolbox that you can use, especially of, for those of you who have, another, have more issues with your short stretch, falling down or causing some pain. The Coban's gonna stay up longer if you're gonna be more active. But again, overall, this is probably not the cheapest option long-term as that it's one-time use versus this you can use over and over and over again. So again, Coban is an option for you to use or another tool for your toolbox, especially if you have a lot of issues with your short stretch bandage falling down or tourniqueting or causing a lot of pain. The Coban is not a long-term use because you do have to have a new box for every time you use it, but it may be something that you use once in a while for a tune-up. If you're not sure, you have any questions, contact your certified lymphedema therapist or your CLT for more information. If you found this video helpful, please let me know, either like it or put a comment down below. And if you have any other topics that you would like to see covered, feel free to comment those down below as well. Thanks everyone.